So today we're taking a look at the GNAN. This is a ship that I really haven't played all that much of, and it really does struggle in random battles. But this airship escort game mode is really, really useful for some of these ships that don't really find their way in random battles all that easily. This game really is gonna come down to the wire and GNAN is gonna perform extremely well. I've never had a game this good in the GNAN before. It's surprisingly good in that I kind of want to play it more in randoms. Maybe I didn't actually fully give this ship enough of a shot uh, when it initially came out. Perhaps that was down to the mediocre line, uh, but this thing's kind of insane. And it really relies on its torpedoes a lot. Really not a big surprise there, considering how many there are on this ship. Deepwater torps, of course, do not reach uh, destroyers, but they are really, really effective against cruisers and against battleships. They're just impossible to see, and there's almost no reaction time. So if you're in the path, you're probably going to get hit. We're gonna just speed this up a little bit, cause we're gonna flank. Airship escort, we're flanking into the enemy's spawn already, not even five minutes into this match. This is one of the reasons that I talked so much about flanking in uh, last week's videos on airship escort. You have to prevent this. You can't allow people to do this. And if you're ever looking for situations where you can flank like this, look for your destroyer pushing up very aggressively. Go in and support them. Maybe you notice some of the enemy team tre trending towards the middle of the map. Um, you know that spawns are relatively mirrored. Notice how many people spawn with you. That's likely how many people you're going to be facing on that flank, assuming things are pretty normal. And if you notice some of those people leaving, well, you can flank like this. We do end up catching a Hayate. Uh, fortunately, our Trump did go in and spot that for us. We smoked up pretty quickly. The GNAN, of course, does not have a lot of HP to it, so we do have to manage our HP pool. It does have a heal and actually has pretty decent armor, much like the Austin, if you've seen that armor. It's got this upper belt that's 32 millimeters thick, which is surprisingly good against battleships in close quarters. Um, the wall of skill here, reminding us of old Shimakaze days, right? Where the 20 kilometer torps were actually pretty good. Uh, these torps are pretty insane. They don't have the range of those 20s, right? But hey, 13 and a half kilometers is pretty nasty. We don't get the full value out of our torpedo reload booster on this one. I tend to not go for the launch one side, launch the other side, then reload booster, and then do it all over again. It tends to take up too much time, I feel like. So I do one side launch, then use the booster, launch that same side again, and then do a turn. I do want to focus on my guns some of the time as well, since they're actually decent. Um, the range isn't all that amazing, but our shell velocity is enough to allow us to hit battleships at these decent ranges. I'm not taking range mod though, I'll talk about the build towards the end. Um, I'm not taking range mod though, we do want the extra DPM, because that is something it feels like GNAN lacks a little bit compared to some of the other light cruisers. Although, considering we're already over 100k, <laughs> it's maybe not lacking in the damage. You just need to get that damage from the torpedoes, not necessarily only from the main guns. Sap, of course, hurts us a lot. Yeah, that Venice did a huge chunk of our HP pool there, so we do want to disengage. And that's another thing that the GNAN does pretty well is its concealment. Assuming that you have a DD with you that's doing even a little bit of scouting, our Tromp here is doing a great job. Um, a little bit of scouting is more than enough, considering how good the concealment is on the Gina. We can pick our fights, our smokes come up very quickly, um, there's not a lot of downtime in between them, even though the smokes don't last very long. Uh, once your smoke fades, you're almost always going to have a smoke available relatively quickly. The problem is just this small engagement radius. Our guns and our torps have similar range, and in random battles, as you, many of you probably have found out if you played this ship, People don't want to push all that much into 13 kilometers of where a GNAN typically will be in random battles. But considering airship escort forces you along a certain path, GNAN is surprisingly effective in this game mode. And I'll definitely be playing it some more because it's just a game mode where this kind of ship shines, where you're limited on your range, but assuming you position yourself well, Bringing all of this firepower, both your guns and torpedoes to bear on the enemy team, it's just kind of ridiculous. You can see how our fire chance is actually pretty good as well. We're not taking IFHE here since we have destroyer caliber guns, so taking IFHE doesn't really let, allow us to pass any 
penetration threshold, so it's really not worth taking the sacrifice to uh, to the fire chance. So fortunately, our Tromp does live there. It got a little sketchy. I probably could have opened up a little bit sooner looking back on things. Would have probably helped him stay alive with a little bit more HP. But 160k already, and the enemy ship is ahead of ours. I really, really do enjoy this game mode because these games can go right down to the wire. I do have some blowouts here and there still, but it seems like these games are going down to the end of the game much more closely than a lot of random battles games do. So I really, really do enjoy that aspect. So here we're trying to ambush the enemy team as they're pushing through this choke point. Of course, that's going to be a great thing for a Gina and anything with really powerful torpedoes, right? You're just going to want to chuck torps down that gap and force them to come through it. And hopefully they take quite a bit of damage here. We're going to try and focus out the cruiser first. He's stuck in a crossfire between us and I think the Puerto Rico ends up actually taking him out. We just have to watch out for the Mecklenburg. That's what a lot of these torps are for. We have a whole other side of torps, right? So I'm trying to vary up when these torpedoes come out. So I do always want to have some sort of torpedo threat for when this Mecklenburg does decide to come out. Or if the cruiser decided to come in. I mean, the Puerto Rico did finish him off there. But if he came around the corner at that moment, I mean, the torps were ready for him, right? And yeah, against DDs, unsurprisingly, we're going to do pretty well at closer ranges. We're no Austin with our sap and reload booster available. But the DPM isn't too bad. Unlike the Austin, though, our arcs are actually worse. So if you are used to Austin and you're thinking that you're going to get this ship and it's going to be a smoke plus torp, uh, version of the Austin with a better reload, but no uh, reload booster or sap. It's different. Uh, you definitely have to lead a lot more. It doesn't feel quite as powerful as the uh, Austin is at some point, but it does have some sustained damage. So if you're pushing, getting teams that push into you and you're able to use your smoke to smoke up and farm them and jump the torps as they push in, this ship is awesome. It's really, really, really solid. And I'm probably going to do a one take on this ship. It's really next up on the list of ships. We're getting close to finishing out the uh, tech tree tier 10. So I'll probably move on to some of the premium tier 10s, I guess. And then once those are done, I don't know what I'll switch to. Maybe we'll take a look at some lower tier stuff. Start going down into tier 9s or tier 8s, something like that. Uh, either way, it'll be good. I think those one take series are really, really nice. Because I do show you these games where everything seems to work out. Even brawling a Mecklenburg. He's got torps. I got torps. Uh, we're going to use our widespread uh, to get a little bit better angle forward, uh, if you notice that when you do widespread. And uh, we managed to take him out. And we only eat one torp in return. Our ship was a little bit saturated, so his torp actually only did like 8,000 damage. So uh, a little bit lucky to only eat one torp there and not die, but at least we traded it. And if I had died, I think we would have lost. I, I actually think it would have come down to the wire, and we probably would have lost. Because as soon as I'm not in this circle, the enemy team instantly is going to win ahead of us. So I have to get back into this circle very quickly. Typically, the fastest way to turn around is to ground. And just look at that. Look at how close we are. <laughs> I haven't had a game this close, I, I don't remember, ever. Uh, and so visually uh, striking there with the two blimps uh, passing one another. We do end up with a victory, thankfully. No crack in achievement, but we did actually get five kills. Keep in mind, you're not going to get random battles achievements in arms race. They're totally separate. So we do collect a few of the arms race specific ones. And a pretty good game. 219k is really, really, really solid. We did a lot of our farming early on on those battleships. And then we just had to clean up some of the DDs. 3k base. I'll take it. That's a very, very, very good match. And uh, I'm really, really happy with that one. Surprised me a lot with how good the Jinan turned out. So I'm excited to try it in random battles in that one take. We'll see how that goes. Uh, but hey, this is at least a good example. As for the build that I've been running on this ship, it's pretty damage focused. I'm still taking concealment, um, but notice we're taking heavy HE and sap. There's really no downside since we have such small uh, caliber guns. So it's a 10% boost to our damage. Adrenaline rush is great. Superintendent with all these skills or consumables, it's so, so good as well. And I've actually got survivability expert on uh, one of the special or somewhat special commanders. We don't have the new one that gives us boost to our ship for hitting certain damage or spotting totals or hitting a certain number of torpedoes. But I'm trying that commander actually out on the Yu Yang, seeing if I can proc the uh, torpedo skill there. 
Haven't yet, but uh, we'll see. It's only a matter of time if I keep playing it. Fill the tubes here along with Demo Expert and uh, Swift Fish. So buffing the Torps here a little bit. Notice I'm not taking the damage one. I think I'd rather have the extra HP and consumables than 15% Torp damage. If I'm hitting a Torp, it's already doing an insane amount of damage. Um, I'd rather get the Torps back a little quicker, maybe make them a little faster, or help me stay alive. That's kind of the idea behind the build. The guns certainly need some buffs though. Uh, so that's why I am kind of focusing on the guns a little more in the upgrades here. You certainly could go a full Torp build and uh, it'd be pretty crazy, but I can't always guarantee myself I'm going to land these Torps. And we already do chuck out a reasonable amount of Torps, especially when you have Torpedo Reload Booster available to you. Uh, you can kind of on command uh, just have your Torps available to you, which is really, really nice. So that's why I want to buff the guns, which are kind of my more sustained damage. I guess that's the, kind of the idea here. Uh, just to show you quick, the armor layout, very much like the Austin, um, almost copied actually. I'm not sure what the exact differences are, um, but the Austin does have better gun characteristics, certainly. Even though it doesn't have the reload, that reload booster is insane for the guns. g though, not bad, especially in uh, Airship Escort. It's kind of insane how good it is, assuming you know the path that the enemy team is going to go on. Just chuck the torps in there, find a good spot to smoke up, and just farm away. Thank you very much for watching this video, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.